Every year, thousands of people from all around the world report seeing UFOs, but yet they still remain a complete mystery as to what they are. If only one person reports seeing a UFO, it can easily be dismissed. But when multiple people report on experiencing the same thing at the same time, then the validity of their claims is hard to deny. The next five UFO sightings are truly fascinating because there is no doubt that they occurred. Here are the top five most credible mass UFO sightings ever. Number five, Battle of Los Angeles. It was early morning on February 25th, 1942. Three months had passed after the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor, bringing the United States into the fray of World War II. Everyone was on alert and on edge. Out of nowhere, air raid sirens began to sound. Something had been spotted in the dark sky. A total blackout was ordered over the city as the early morning skies filled up with the beaming searchlights. Anti-aircraft guns started firing at something and didn't stop until 4 a.m. By the end of it all, 1,400 shells had been fired, the blackout finally lifted, and Los Angeles was declared safe again by 7.21 a.m. This was what history refers to as the Battle of Los Angeles. For years, many have been trying to figure out what exactly it was that set off the alarms that night. After an internal investigation, the military attributed the incident to nothing more than war nerves. People were told that what they had seen was a weather balloon, and the military started firing on it thinking it was the Japanese attacking. But many believe that was a typical run-of-the-mill government cover-up. Eyewitnesses reported seeing a circular aircraft with pale orange lights coming from it that hovered above the city. They said the fired shells exploded in and around the object without incurring any damage or hitting the object itself. Despite the barrage of ammo, the object simply cruised at a leisurely pace until it was out of firing range and disappeared. The famous picture of the incident, posted on the front page of the Los Angeles Times the next day, shows a host of searchlights trained on a single object in the night sky, and it seems to validate what thousands of LA residents reported seeing. A disc-like object with a rounded top, one that frightened the army so much that they unleashed a war on it, and not simply a weather balloon. Number four, NASA cuts live feed. Thanks to NASA, anyone on the internet can tune in and watch the International Space Station anytime they want to. But sometimes, if something appears they don't want the public to see, the feed can mysteriously be cut out. That's exactly what happened on July 9th, 2016. Space enthusiasts who were tuning into the live feed noticed an unusual object coming into view. An unidentified flying object was cruising down towards Earth when all of a sudden the broadcast was shut off. Being accused of deliberately cutting off the feed, NASA claims they didn't do it on purpose, that the signal would cut off when their cameras moved out of range from their tracking and data relay satellites, and that this is exactly what happened that day. NASA's high-definition Earth viewing system consists of four HD cameras attached on the outside of the International Space Station. All of the cameras are trained towards Earth, and the footage automatically cycles through each camera. So if NASA is so concerned with shielding people from the existence of UFOs, why would they then make a live feed available for us to view? Some believe that the purpose of having a quote-unquote live feed is to mislead the public into believing that NASA is as transparent as can possibly be. But in reality, this view of space is highly monitored, even delayed, and what the public is allowed to see is what they decide to show us. What happened that day was simply a big mistake that NASA never intended anyone to view. Even UFO enthusiasts admit it could be a meteor or a wayward satellite, but what's most suspicious is the timing of the cutoff. This was witnessed by thousands of people in real time, and there's no denying that something was out there high above our planet. What it is exactly, we may never know. Number three, Belgium UFO wave. One of the most intense mass UFO sightings happened in Belgium during the time between November 29, 1989 and March 1990. Dubbed as the Belgium UFO wave, 
The sightings were recorded by no less than 30 different groups of witnesses, three of which were police officers. The first wave of UFOs were reported in the small town of Yupin. Witnesses saw low-flying triangular aircrafts with bright lights coming from them. They didn't make any sound and were seen by several people hours apart before making their way towards the borders of Germany and the Netherlands. In the following months, there were some sporadic sightings, but the peak occurrence happened on March 30th and 31st, when the unidentified lights were reported 30 miles south of Brussels. The Control Reporting Center, which was in charge of monitoring radar signals in the airspace there, started receiving reports of the lights. They sent the paramilitary police into the area, and they responded with a visual confirmation. The object they saw was described as before, with three lights in a triangular formation. This was then corroborated when the object showed up on the CRC radar screen. 30 minutes after the initial reports, a second set of lights were reported and confirmed. It was here when the military decided to get involved. Two F-16 fighter jets were sent to investigate and intercept the light formations. Unusually, the fighter pilots were able to capture the objects on their radar screens, but no visual contact was ever reached. They attempted to pursue and were able to get a radar lock three different times, but each time the object would abruptly speed away, breaking the lock. During one of these instances, it was observed that the object was able to change altitudes and make dramatic descents at speeds far faster than any of the fighter jets could keep up with. By the end, it's estimated that over 1,000 people saw the lights and aircraft, but only one picture has emerged throughout it all. Plenty were taken, but most came out blurry. A physics professor, August Messon, suggests that it could be due to infrared light interference. He conducted an experiment exposing a picture to infrared light and the results were the same as the blurry images taken by the witnesses. No one knows what the sightings were exactly, but the sheer number of people who saw it, including the military, make it undeniable that something very strange was in the skies above Belgium. Number two, V-shaped lights in the Hudson Valley. Just an hour's drive from New York City, Hudson Valley became a hotspot of UFO activity that spanned several years. It started in 1981, when a retired policeman was looking up at the night sky. He saw several bright lights coming from the south and heading towards him, which at first he thought were planes. But the light formation on them was unlike any aircraft he had seen, and even though they were flying low, they made absolutely no sound. With his eyes trailed on the green and red lights, he noticed there appeared to be some sort of fuselage connecting them. This report, along with many others, would spark the Hudson Valley sightings that ran for years, peaking in 1983. When UFO investigators caught wind of the initial reports, they set up shop in the area and installed a hotline. It would prove useful when on March 24, 1983, the lights would appear in the sky once again. This time, over 300 calls were directed to the hotline from residents and eyewitnesses in the area. All of the descriptions were similar, even identical to each other. The object projected different lights in a V formation and were seen slowly and silently moving. Witnesses who were in Jefferson Park at the moment reported it was flying quite low and was as wide as 16 or 17 houses put together. It was silent and then began humming before it disappeared with great speed. The same night, residents in the city of Yorktown witnessed a similar event. The police were inundated with so many calls that they were afraid they wouldn't be able to respond to real emergencies. By the end of 1986, over 5,000 reports were sent in regarding the unusual craft. One of the most dramatic reports made was when a worker from the Indian Point nuclear plant saw the unusual object hovering above and even moving as close as 30 feet from the reactor. Supervisors of the plant even considered having planes sent in to shoot it down and guards on post reported the object being at least 1,000 feet long. All of these eyewitness accounts came from real people and officials who encountered this set of unusual lights. Even though it's hard to believe, the only logical conclusion is that this gigantic craft was very real. Number one, the Phoenix Lights. 
On the night of March 13, 1997, Phoenix residents were perplexed when they saw bright reddish-orange lights moving across the night sky. Also referred to as the Phoenix Lights, these could be seen as far away as Sonora, Mexico. The first known report was by a man who said he saw a V-shaped object floating in the sky. He described it as being the size of a 747 and sounding like rushing wind. It had six lights and was moving northwest to southeast. Another witness and former police officer also reported seeing the lights. He went home and grabbed binoculars while keeping an eye out for the object until it disappeared over the horizon. Shortly after this, witnesses in Prescott and Prescott Valley began phoning in about the mysterious lights. This time, they said it was definitely a solid object because it would block out the stars overhead when it passed. One person reported that the first three lights were in a tight cluster V formation, while the other two lights were further back in the V. In Phoenix, it was spotted by truck driver Bill Grainer, where he said that the lights hovered around the area for two hours. Another witness on the road stopped at a payphone to make the call to report having seen a bizarre cluster of stars moving slowly in the northern sky. Then Governor Fife Symington issued a press release making light of the situation but later recanted, admitting that he saw the same strange lights himself. He said, I'm a pilot and I know just about every machine that flies. It was bigger than anything that I've ever seen. It remains a great mystery. Other people saw it, responsible people. I don't know why people would ridicule it. He then added that during the time of the Arizona lights, he contacted the military to ask about it, and he only received a no comment response. Furthermore, Councilwoman Frances Barwood launched an extensive investigation about the phenomenon and found out that out of the 700 witnesses, the government never interviewed a single one of them. Interestingly, in 2007, a repeat of the lights happened and was videotaped by Fox News. However, the military was quick to dismiss it only as a set of flares dropped by their aircraft. So there were the top five most credible mass UFO sightings ever. While these cases may never be explained, when so many people witness such a remarkable event, it makes it difficult to say that it didn't happen. So if these cases are in fact real, what kind of explanation do you have for what these UFOs were? If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel so that we can continue to bring you an interesting and scary video each week. We love hearing from you, so let us know in the comments below what you think about these cases. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.